Your informational service tape for this month is compiled during the period of time when President Devon Woodland is on a trade mission to eight African countries. We'll lead off with Devon's interview defining the purposes of that mission. Also, we have some other interesting items to report. A half million bushel grain sale. We have a report on patterns of consuming and supplying in hogs. Some inequities in cattle pricing. A statement about dairy supports by Ag Secretary Berglund. Ed Graff, Director of Dairy. And we'll hear Diane Blonigan, Minnesota State PR Director for the NFO. Now, here's Devon Woodland, President of the National Farmers Organization. Well, the trip is an investment in the future of agriculture in this country. I couldn't help noticing this great potential when I went on a similar trade mission to China, another country whose people are going to need a lot of agriculture production, plus the machinery and the technology to bring them into modern times. On that visit to China, I was able to tell their leadership that the National Farmers Organization could supply unequal quality farm products direct from our farms without a lot of middlemen commissions. These African countries we'll visit are also importers of agriculture commodities. I'm hoping to find out what their needs are and establish a relationship that can result in NFO doing business directly with them at some future date. Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization. On a recent program, Jack Cruz of the NFO Grain Department made mention of the fact that they moved quite a lot of grain out of the state of Nebraska. He made the point that they sold above the locally quoted market in Nebraska. It just happens that Ed Tiverti is here in the NFO home office. Ed is Regional 3 Grain Director. Ed, the block of grain got put together because of a rather big grower there. Now, who is he and what part of Nebraska? Well, it's Ronnie Baker, and he lives in south-central Nebraska. And uh, as I mentioned, he uh, farms about 1,000 acres of irrigated corn. Now, what happened after that? You were there on the scene. I've talked to him several times, and I think that he probably used the system somewhat in the past, but not as now with all of his, with all of his production. Uh, he called uh, one night, and we met at the office. I explained what we can do through NFO, and... And I, I guess it's relatively simple. At the end, uh, he uh, signed the contract for sale for 420,000 bushels of grain, and and he says, uh, do the best you can or which way you think it'll work the best through NFO, and left and called up that afternoon to find out if we did anything about it. And that's, I guess, about as simple as it ended up. It had a lot of preliminary work, but all he had to do is uh, have the confidence to go through the organization. Now, were there other producers who joined in that same block? Yes, we put other producers together to make a close to 500,000 bushel block on it, and it, it was offered to several companies and and pushed the market 15 cents a bushel, and they we ended up getting that for it. And so uh, that's what you can do through the system. It doesn't mean that everybody that puts his grain through NFO gets 15 cents a bushel more, but by using the system, and that's what we're selling. We're not another grain company or a grain buyer. Lord knows we have plenty of those. This is a new marketing system, and if we use it, it's just uh, we can do whatever we want with it if we use it. What is the NFO objective? The NFO objective is to get a cost of production plus a reasonable profit for our production. Price it at the farm where our base of strength is. Just the farmer understands that he owns it first and until he puts a price on it, uh, nobody's going to pay it unless he puts a tag on it. Pleasure to talk to you, Ed. He was in on a transaction to sell a half million bushel block of corn under collective bargaining to one of the big grain companies. The NFO contract was 15 cents over the local market. Ed made the point that it isn't just being over a locally quoted price that NFO members regard as the objective. They're building collective bargaining to raise the price level generally with the goal of cost of production plus a reasonable profit. Judy Shirley and Gail Saylor work in the NFO dairy department. Here they are talking about, am I really committed until I want to be? Gail? Yes, Judy? There's this guy who wants to ship his wheat with the NFO grain department, but he says there isn't any NFO collection point for livestock nearby. So, he wants to know, would he be bound to move his livestock with NFO if he ships his grain with NFO, right? Right. What should we tell him? You tell him he's not bound to sell any commodity with NFO unless he volunteers to do so. 
Well, after he volunteers to sell a commodity with NFO, then what binds him to deliver? You know, if it's all voluntary? Take grain, for example. Let's say the producer is an NFO member. He isn't bound to do anything until he commits himself to. In grain, he signs a contract for sale of grain, and then he indicates various things, like what portion and when, or whether he'll take the option of having NFO sell his grain as part of a block when the NFO bargainers think best. But he's never bound to sell any commodity until he volunteers to commit that commodity. Dig? I dig. We're going to hear Roger Blank now, negotiator for NFO Hog Division. You know, cost of production plus a reasonable profit is a long-time goal of the National Farmers Organization, so we'll ask that question of Roger first. What is the cost of production in, in hogs? Does the NFO have specific figures? Based on the cost of a 40-pound feeder pig or a credit to the farrying operation of $25, uh, we find that the bottom line shows a break-even level of $39.26. For example, the cost of gain from a 40 pound to sale weight of 220 pounds, or the total feed cost, if it be, would be $43.16. Then other direct costs would be $8.39. Now in this other direct cost, we include the veterinarian and medicine, marketing, power and fuel, labor at $3.50 an hour, and this may be a little low in some areas, and miscellaneous such as bedding, supplies, etc. That comprises the 839. Then the overhead expenses, the breakdown on that would be buildings, equipment depreciation, interest, maintenance, taxes, insurance, and a 3% mortality or death loss, and management and administration. Now this totals $9.83. This gives us a total production cost on a 220-pound hog of 86.38 or a 39.26 per hundred weight production cost, which would be a break-even level. The head of the NFO Hog Division, Alan Scraw, made an important announcement for all American consumers. It was released at the Farm Progress Show at Crawfordsville, Indiana. Based on government reports and the projections of many economists, an increase of 20 to 24 percent in hog marketings is anticipated for the fourth quarter of 1979. To accommodate this, the average daily consumption of cooked pork in the U.S. would have to be increased by only one-fifth of an ounce per person. This would increase the average daily consumption of pork in this country to only an approximate 1.23 ounces. Those involved in the hog industry should step up pork promotion efforts in order to encourage this additional consumption. It seems out of sorts that the pork industry groups cannot unite their efforts to protect the very lifeblood of the producers that support them. I would hope that these groups would meet nationally and then regionally to decide on a course of action. The National Farmers Organization is encouraging hog producers to adjust their market weights from an approximate average of 235 pounds to 205 to 220. This reduction would reduce the tonnage of product on the market and help bring the supply in line with the demand. Alan Scraw also encouraged all hog producers to consider joining the organization and participating in the effort to stabilize hog prices this fall. There's a new study prepared by the National Farmers Organization and it reveals flagrant inequities in cattle pricing during May, June, and July of this year. Here's Steve Bohr of the Slaughter Cattle Division of the NFO to explain the study. It shows that the chain grocery stores continue control of a sliding scale action in maintaining profits at the expense of the cattle producer. The study figures were based on using live steers weighing 1,050 pounds and a $28 per head packer kill cost, a figure of 25.2 cents per pound to cover the retailer costs of operation was used, and that figure is thought to be high. The study shows that the cattle producer's share of the profit went from 46.2% in May to a minus 54.8% in July. At the same time, the chain retailer's percent of profit went from 48.1% in May to a whopping 138.3% in July. The study also shows that the cattleman's dollar profit dropped from $172.20 in May 
to a loss of $61.11 in July. That was Steve Bohr of NFO Slaughter Cattle Division. And now to Saginaw, Michigan, where Secretary of Agriculture Bob Berglund came to a district NFO meeting. He answered a question about USDA dairy price supports. It will stay at 80, and that will mean an increase in the effective support rate of some amount. We don't know how much yet, but we do know that the milk production is up about 1%, but consumption is up as much. There's no buildup in dairy stocks. Dairy prices are run, running above the support rate. A lot of growers are trying to decide now whether to cash in and take advantage of these strong beef prices. You know, a spent old Holstein cow, if she's got any size, is worth 900 bucks. And uh, a producer is worth twice that much. And if we do anything dumb, there will be a sellout of dairy cattle and there will be a shortage of supply and the consumer will pay through the nose. We know that too. We're going to continue the support rate at 80% of parity. I think that will result in a, an increase in this rate of about 50 cents, 40 to, 60. 40 to 60 cents a hundred. Not yet decided, but it's something in that range. That was the Secretary of Agriculture. And now here's Ed Graff, Director of the Dairy Department of NFO. The goal of the NFO to raise the price level of milk is being realized. Where we have active bargaining programs, the prices received by our members are higher. According to USDA, on a nationwide average, milk prices have advanced 15% during this past year. But note this. In Wisconsin, where the National Farmers Organization does its biggest volume, the advance has reached 17% higher. Minnesota, 16%. But in California, where NFO has no active dairy bargaining, the advance at the same time was only 8%. Where NFO is in the picture, milk prices are better. We invite you to look into it. Remember, things really aren't going to get better until you do something about it. Diane Blonigan is Director of Public Relations for the NFO in Minnesota. She recently appeared on a morning program on WCCO Minneapolis. A report came out that worldwide wheat production, which has been increasing for 30 years, has now leveled off. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, U.S. farmers are going to have to plant more wheat to meet the demand. If this is so, why aren't wheat prices at 100% parity? Economists have always been saying there's too much of a surplus. That's why prices aren't better. Why is it that agriculture is treated differently? Why are there two sets of rules? The answer is simple. Farmers have allowed themselves to be placed in a position of weakness. They are not sufficiently organized in a world where the people they deal with are well organized. Farmers don't set their own prices. They aren't controlling themselves, so the government and industry does it for them. And it's only human nature to try to get something as cheaply as possible from someone in a weak position. Farmers have something everyone else needs. They must organize so they can bargain together and price their products. Only then will they receive 100% parity. There is an organization that enables farmers to bargain together for a price, and that organization has a well-planned system ready to handle the nation's farm production. That organization is National Farmers Organization. It's up to farmers to make it work by joining and putting their production with their neighbors. That was Diane Blonigan, Minnesota State Publicity Director for the NFO. This county informational service tape is compiled and edited each month by Don Mack, head of the NFO Radio Division. I'm Phil Allen reporting for the National Farmers Organization.